Today we're visiting Parkwood, also known by the name of the estate, Park Labrios, home to a great example of a 6,000 year old chambered tomb, and a cave that contains rock art from over 14,000 years ago. This site of special scientific interest is a must see if you're in South Wales. Welcome back to the channel, Coral Jacks. I'm Jackie, and if you like the videos I'm making with my fiance Coral and our dog Seb, please subscribe to help us spend more time doing what we love. Park Labrios Estate is a former medieval deer park and is situated on the Gower Peninsula 10 miles from Swansea. The Gower coast is rich in caves and tombs, from prehistory to the medieval period, and in 1956 the peninsula was designated the UK's first official area of outstanding natural beauty. Within the park are two caves and a partially reconstructed long cairn. Park Cum Long Cairn, also known as Park Librios Burial Chamber, was discovered in 1869 by workers who were digging for roadstones. Excavations carried out later that year revealed the partial remains of over 40 human skeletons, as well as animal remains and Neolithic pottery. Radiocarbon dated samples show the tomb was accessed by many generations predominantly over a period of three to eight hundred years. This period of use began around 3800 BCE and therefore the tomb, or shrine, is dated at around 6000 years old. As with many ancient sites, the original construction date is hard to prove and remains disputed. In this case, partly due to the fact that other bones found gave dates from 8,000 to 12,000 years ago, the latter being from the end of the Ice Age. The main theory is that these much older bones were moved from nearby caves which overlooked the site. Supporting this theory are a quantity of animal bones which were also found in the tomb, including eight dogs, pigs, sheep, cattle, a cat and a deer. Some of the remains also showed marks from scavenging animals, indicating that the bodies may have lain exposed in the nearby caves before they were then collected and deposited inside the tomb. It's also been speculated that the original construction could be much older, like with many of the dolmens and stone circles that we've visited recently. Evidence of human activity in this area dates back nearly 30,000 years, with the oldest known human burial in Great Britain being discovered just eight miles west and a 28,000-year-old tanged point weapon being found in Cathole Cave, which is just a short walk from the tomb. Cathole Cave has been the subject of multiple excavations since 1864 and has produced archaeological finds spanning the Paleolithic to medieval periods, such as bones of mammoths, woolly rhino and other tools and artefacts. But in 2010, archaeologist George Nash discovered something in Cathole Cave that everyone else had missed an engraving of a reindeer that was created at least 14,000 years ago, making this the oldest known rock art on the British Isles. Incomprehensibly, someone decided to try and vandalise the rock, and after this, plans went ahead to install a fence that now blocks public access to most of the cave, but it's still an amazing place to visit. As you may have already noticed during this video, the long cairn here has gone by many names. Another of these was the giant's grave, at first, Coral and I assumed that this name came from the popular tradition of tales of giants building the stone circles and dolmens around Wales. But the 1869 report notes males of gigantic proportions and that examinations of the bones from which stature could be estimated indicate that the male mortuary population were, and I quote, big men, whereas the females were short and gracile. Big men. <laughs> <laughs> A further reference says males analysed from Park Cum Long Cairn were particularly robust when compared to the females, so perhaps this is where the name Giant's Grave comes from. Originally, the chambers would have been covered with large capstones, enclosing the chambers containing the human remains. The earth covering and the upper part of the cromlech have been removed leaving the passageways and lateral chambers fully exposed. 
There is no record of a capstone having been recovered, and it may well have been broken up during the accidental discovery. Many large capstones and entire monuments are thought to have been lost to more modern building projects.